In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we talk about the three best 30-minute workouts you can do for fat loss and for muscle gain. So here's what we did. We created three fast workouts, okay? A lot of people have limited time, but of course, they still want to get maximum bang for their buck. They want to get good results still. So we created three workouts. One of them is great for strength and muscle. The other one is great for conditioning and calorie burn or fat burn. And the third one is mobility-based. Uh, so we think you're going to have some great takeaways. You can follow these workouts and see for yourself. We think they're going to work great for most of you guys listening right now. Now, this episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors, Legion. Now, Legion makes excellent performance-based supplements. They sell creatine. They have pre-workout supplements. They sell protein powders. Now, here's the deal. We work with Legion because all of their supplements are transparent. What you see on the label is what is in the product. They also don't put little doses of things just to say they have them in there. They use efficacious uh, doses. In other words, studies show that three grams of you know citrulline is great for pre-workout. Well, that's what you're going to find in their pre-workout. It's stuff that actually works at the doses that actually work. And by the way, all of their products are naturally sweetened. There are no artificial uh, sweeteners in their products. Now, if you go to buylegion.com, that's B-U-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash mind pump, you can get 20% off your first order. Just use the code mind pump. If you're a returning customer, you'll get double rewards points. Also, uh, we're putting one of our best short-term fat loss muscle, uh, muscle preserving programs on sale. This is a great summertime program. A lot of you are interested in getting lean over the summer. Uh, our HIT program is the most effective in a short period of time. It's like a six-week program, extremely effective. It's 50% off. It's all high-intensity interval training based with weights so you don't lose muscle. Here's how you get your 50% off. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com and use the code HIT50. That's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. You know, one of the 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 most common um, objections that I would hear from a potential client, the one that I'd hear pretty consistently and that actually has um, a lot of validity, not to say that objections don't have validity typically, but a lot of times people will say that there's roadblocks in front of their, you know, why they can't work out, why they're not exercising consistently. And a lot of it isn't, is, is just them putting things out. Not, there aren't necessarily actual roadblocks, but there is one that's a real one that I used to approach very differently. Um, and that was the time issue. You know, people would, they'd tell me that the reason why that they haven't embarked on a, a, a fitness and health journey, why they don't exercise regularly is because they, they just don't have a lot of time. They have a job, they have kids. Um, and you know, the way I used to approach that as an early trainer was different than the way I, I approached it later on, and it was it was actually wrong. The way I did it in the first time, the, the as an early trainer, was not very effective. And what I used to say to people was, you know, I do the whole speech, right? Like, okay, I I understand you don't have a lot of time, but all of us have the same twenty four hours in a day. And yeah, then you would break down the yeah, math. You have to mm -hmm. exactly, you, you know, you have to prioritize fitness and health. How important do you think your health is to you? It's more important than anything else. If you have poor health, then you can't be a good parent. If you have poor health, then you can't be a good employee or you can't run your business well. It's very so logical. You need to prioritize your time and make the time to work out. And the truth is sometimes, and I'm, I'm a pretty convincing person, I can, I can speak in convincing ways. Sometimes I would spark motivation in people and get them to do, to, to take that first step and dedicate, you know, okay, fine, that's it. I'm going to come in, I'm going to see you four days a week or whatever. But long term, it was a terrible strategy because number one, uh, I'm not validating what they're saying. Of course, they're looking at me as some twenty-something-year-old trainer. No, you know how? What, what do you know about me? You love working out, right? For me, I got all these responsibilities that are more important to me that I need to take care of. Number two, if I was successful at getting someone hyper motivated, it it didn't last because it was too big of a change. You know, they were going from no working out to now I motivated to come to the gym. You know, four or five hours a week, which was just too much. About five years into my career. Uh, you know, I took, a, and I know you guys did something similar. I, I really took a hard look at my success rate, and if I was being honest, I was I was failing. You know, I was doing well with people in short periods of time, but I didn't have a lot of 
forever success. I didn't have a lot of permanent success with people. Later on, um, I had a completely different uh, strategy. And I actually learned this from uh, a manager that I had worked with who was an excellent communicator. Um, and I remember one day um, he, him and I were, were talking and you know, one of the gyms that I was managing was just busy. It was, you know, I think it was February. So it was like beginning of the year packed. And I was like, man, the gym gets super packed at night. And when I'm touring potential members, they ask me about that, about how busy it is. And he goes, well, what do you say? And I say, well, I tell them that we have lots of equipment. I tell them that it's usually not this busy. It's the beginning of the year that they could come at different times. And he's like, that's the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. He said, just acknowledge what they said and move on. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, if someone says it's super busy, you'd be like, I know it's really busy right now. And then you just go along. And I thought, huh, that's interesting. And I did it. And I remember how people just, it was not an issue. So then I started applying that towards the, the time issue. And I thought to myself, God, I'm not listening to people. So then when people would present to me the time issue and say, I don't have a lot of time, I would follow up with the question and say, well, how much time can you commit to fitness? Honestly, what is... What can you honestly, realistically, long-term basis commit to exercise? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a, a routine around the time you know you have, and we're going to make it as effective as possible. And it's going to be valuable because it's more than what you're doing now. And I'm going to make it as valuable as possible because I know what I'm doing. So much more successful. Because then people would say to me, I only have an hour a week, 30 minutes, twice a week or whatever. Then I would design a routine around that. And what would end up happening is they'd be more consistent because it was realistic. They would definitely see results because I did make an effective workout. It was much more than they were doing before. And then inevitably, they'd see results. And without me saying anything, they'd come up and to me later on and be like, Sal, I think I, I'm ready to work out more. I'd like to dedicate more time to exercise. It was just way more effective. Yeah, well, I that, that was always a tough thing you know, coming in because um, <clears throat> one of those things where you want to you wanna just – take them on this this path that's perfect for them and you want to describe like why they need to do all these things and, and get on board and um, you're super motivated for them to change and uh, you have nothing but good intentions as a trainer trying to to steer this person into you know really like committing getting more commitment out of them instead of understanding uh, where they're at where they're coming from like what's actually something that uh, isn't gonna isn't gonna be like like a, a drastic change. So uh, something that's a drastic change in the very beginning, like it's it, it's it's just a lot more uh, obstacles in your way where you could just start there and really start to build and develop uh, you know more more momentum along this path. For me, it was realizing that I was using guilt and motivation to get these people to do this, and that's fleeting. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, it was, I started to piece together and I've shared that, like when that kind of a, that epiphany happened for me where I was like, you know, uh, told that I was, you know, a, a top performer and trainer and I had all these accolades and plaques and trophies to, to show for it. But yet, um, when I thought of all the people that I had fundamentally changed their lives long term, there, I could probably count on one or two hands how many they were, but yet I've trained hundreds of people by that time. And it's because my approach was all wrong, you know, and I realized that like anything else, uh, whether it be you're learning to play an instrument or learn a new subject or a language or even setting a goal of, I want to chip away or I want to become a rate, a reader. I wasn't a reader before and now I want to start reading. And the idea of, uh, you have to do a certain amount of time or commit a certain amount of days, uh, to whatever this new skill or thing you're trying to learn is such a bad approach because it's setting yourself up for failure versus trying to make small incremental changes into your current lifestyle. And by doing that, it turns into uh, long-term behaviors. And so, yeah, I went from being the trainer who used to, you know, and I think some of that comes too from a lot of our certifications and, and the things that we would read as trainers. I think uh, most uh, all certs and people that would speak on, you know, oh, they say that the, the average person, if they just worked out three hours a week, that's plenty to get them in shape. So that was kind of like that hard number that I think that was mm -hmm. stuck in every trainer's head that, mm -hmm. you know, as long as you train a good three hours of intense training a week, you could pretty much do anything with your body. So the way I looked at it was I got to convince everybody to at least do that. And it was just, it's a terrible approach. And you're also blinded by being a trainer 
who this is your life. You know, this is this is your livelihood. This is what you love to do. You're passionate about doing. And it took me a long time to see it from their perspective. Mm-hmm. Somebody who doesn't give a shit about working out. In fact, doesn't like it or dreads it or is only there because their doctor has told them to. And they have many other passions in their life that take up a majority of their calendar. And here I'm trying to convince them that, you know, you need to make my passion your priority if you really want to change. And I think that's just a horrible this, approach. It was similar when people would tell me that, uh, you know, part of their activity was walking. Oh, I go on walks, you know, uh, for 30 minutes. I'd be like, Ugh, walking, that's not exercise. Like, you got to push yourself. Now, here's the irony. Objectively speaking, you could get phenomenal results. You could get great fitness and health by incorporating things like walking and effective 30-minute workouts. Now, for the average person, you can actually go very, very far. You know, Doug was my client for a long time. I trained Doug probably for a year, a full year, two days a week. It was two workouts a week, two full body workouts a week. We got him to deadlift more than twice his body weight. I think it was like two and a half times his body weight. He built tremendous amounts of muscle. And that's, I'm, I'm using Doug, Doug as an example because of, you know, if you're a long time listener, and you, he's our producer, so you're familiar with Doug. But I've done that with lots of clients. So not only is it uh, a, a, a poor strategy to get people to be long-term consistent, the truth is that if you're not doing much now, that, if, and especially if you design and construct a good workout, a little bit of time can make a pretty significant difference. Now, you're not going to be a, a high-level bodybuilder. You're not going to be a competitive athlete training with not a lot of time, but you will be fit, healthy. You will be building considerably more muscle than you have now. And as far as body fat loss is concerned, paired with good diet, you can get very, very, very far. And so what I want to do is I want to put together for people three effective 30-minute workouts and three different types of effective 30-minute workouts. Because as, I was, as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking, okay, what we can probably do is put together a good muscle building and strength building 30-minute workout. But I also would like to you know, construct an effective 30-minute hit type workout where you get your conditioning and lots of calorie burn. And then I'd also like to put together a good 30-minute mobility type routine, something that's going to work on range of motion, injury prevention, and all that kind of stuff. And the truth is all of them have value, but you know, you're going to have three different options. And all of those, if you do them properly, can give you significant results. So Let's start with the muscle building and strength building, you know, 30 minute workout. Now, well, the first key to that is choosing the right exercises, right? If you're only going to lift uh, for strength for 30 minutes, mm-hmm. uh, the last thing you want to do is to go into a gym and, and pick three, four, or five, uh, you know, machines mm-hmm. uh, that you're going to, you're going to hop on. The, the benefit that you're going to get uh, in comparison to uh, big compound lifts is, is minimal. So, when you that and that's the real key about if you're going to reduce the time that you're inside a gym like you can get away with four or five machine exercises if you're spending an hour in there and you still incorporate four or five big lifts in there uh because and mainly because you did the biggest bang for your buck in those lifts so if i'm only working with 25 or 30 minutes much of like what the workout looked like for me today um i'm just going to pick 3 to 5 tops big lifts yeah, that are biggest the, movers yeah the biggest bang for my buck. absolutely because what you want remember this first workout this first 30 minute workout the goal is muscle and strength so what we want to do is we want to pick the most effective muscle and strength building exercises we don't have a lot of time so we don't want to throw in things that are that are less effective you know we have a million exercises to pick from let's pick the top three or four most effective muscle building exercises. Now, why, why is this important, by the way? Well, building muscle, speed. first of all, it looks good, obviously. If you have more muscle on your body, you're going to look more sculpted and shaped and firm and toned and all that stuff. But it also speeds up your metabolism. So if your goal is fat loss, building muscle and strength gives you more fat-burning machinery, meaning you burn more calories even at rest. You, you have a, a, a higher automatic calorie burn, which especially if your time is limited, because here's the deal. Most people listening who have limited time, it's not because they're being active all day. They're limited time with inactive types of activities. You know, modern life is sitting, 
It's a lot of sitting. I work yeah, at the yeah. computer at my Mentally desk. Mentally busy. Yeah, exactly. You're busy, but you're not like, it's not like you're outside gardening and, you know, digging holes and, you know, building houses. I mean, maybe you, you do that, but most people aren't. Most people are busy, but sedentary. So building muscle and strength is beneficial because now you have a faster metabolism that makes leaner easier for you. And of course, for those of us who understand that muscle gives us good structure, it gives us good shape. It makes us look better, feel better, prevents, uh, it prevents injury, balances out hormones. Strength is the foundation because it provides more abilities. And the more abilities you have, that as a byproduct, you move more, you're more active, you're more able to do all these different things. And, and the thing is, it's it's an energy, like you, you get more energy. So if you've ever noticed, like the less you move and the more you sit, you're, you, you're more likely to not want to get up and move around and do things. So it's just, it's, it's part of the whole process of trying to create a new lifestyle by establishing this foundational strength first. Right. So- Building strength consists of doing straight sets with rest periods in between the sets. So you have to rest in between sets, not because you need it. And this is important to communicate because oftentimes clients would be like, I can go again. You know, yeah. I can go again. You want to rest because we're training a, an energy pathway that leads towards muscle and strength. If we don't rest, then we're building more stamina and endurance, which is okay. That's fine, but it's not muscle and strength anymore. So what you're doing are sets of six to 12 reps. You're doing them controlled. You're focusing on form. After you're done with the set, you rest for anywhere between one to three minutes. Then you repeat it again. You're probably doing anywhere between two to five sets of an exercise, and then you move to the next one. Um, okay, so let's pick the first exercise. I think, uh, I, I think I can make a really, really strong argument for the barbell squat. I think the barbell squat is one of the most uh, foundational movements. It builds overall good strength. It's a lower body exercise, but it also involves the upper body. Um, I can't think of any, you know, three other lower body exercises combined that would beat the squat in terms of just general muscle and strength building. Studies, by the way, on exercises uh, prove this. Um, when they do studies, they actually show muscle protein synthesis levels. This is a this is a signal that we can measure that shows muscle building. Squats spikes this higher than any other exercise. They've also in men tested things like testosterone spikes. You tend to get a spike in testosterone, men do at least after they follow a good strength training routine. Barbell squats causes the highest spike. In women, you see that with growth hormone. Um, it just is extremely effective. And so my opinion, of course, I'm speaking generally, but for most people, uh, barbell squats yeah. has to be one of the three or four exercises, and that it's you do. it's emulating a, a primal movement pattern. So something that uh, y we all should have the ability to do this, and not only that, it will actually relieve uh, all of that excess tension that could lead to back pain uh, down down the road. Where you know if you're not able to squat, you know the, your your back is going to take on a lot of the brunt of the force, and, and anytime you pick something up. Uh, it's going to be compromised. Your your hips, your glutes, like everything around, centered around your hips, is very important to have that kind of strength uh, in, in order to to contribute to you know the overall strong body. Well, I, I if I'm only working out for 25 to 30 minutes too, and I and I have to pick you know three to five exercises, uh, I'm also going to consider too how many muscles are being activated in a exercise like a squat. Totally. Because mm -hmm. uh, someone listening might be like, well, what about the hack squat or the leg press? You know, leg press is a great exercise too, and that's for training your legs like squats. But, man, squat. You, when you do squats, uh, my back gets pumped, my shoulders gets pumped, my forearms get pumped, my core gets activated. I feel all the way down into my calves. Uh, so much has been your entire posterior chain plus your quads. All Everything is getting worked. So I, I want to do a movement that is as as little isolating as possible because I only have so many exercises and so much time. So doing a the biggest bang for your buck. And then you have to also take into consideration uh, the, the benefits that you get for the central nervous system too. I mean that the adaptation that you get from that from from squats versus a leg press or a leg extension or a machine exercise is also something that is is compounding and makes it even more beneficial. 100%. So that's got to be one of the number one exercises uh, that we can talk about. So the next movement that I would say belongs um, in, in, in this particular 30-minute workout, um, a barbell or a dumbbell row. 
Um, rowing, if you're going to do a back exercise and you can only pick one, um, I like rowing more than a, I like uh, pull-ups. But now, pull-ups are phenomenal, by the way. I love pull-ups. I love pull-downs. I think they're great. But a row tends to work the back in ways that people need more than a pull-up or a pull-down. Most people have forward shoulder. They've got weak mid-backs, hmm. causing neck tension and shoulder problems, all that stuff. Um, rows tend to work. They work the whole back musculature. You still get a lot of lat activation. But doing them properly, you're also getting the shoulder to come back. It's a great – if you do it right, it's a great posture exercise. Now, it's a compound movement just like the barbell squat is. So you're getting a great deal of biceps and forearms in that particular movement. You get really, really strong at a row – um, it's like you're doing curls and a, and a back exercise together. Um, that's one of my other uh, favorite exercises. Yeah, the only reason why I wouldn't argue with you about a pull-up is just because when I think about the majority, the majority of people cannot do five to ten strict pull-ups. That's true. With really good mechanics, and so get the most from that. So, or I would, or I would argue with you that I think the the pull-up could be right there. So you know, if you're listening and you're somebody who who can do good, really good pull-ups, and you can get five to ten control pull-ups, then there's a there, there's a there's a decent case for uh, doing that uh, in replace of the rows. But if not, absolutely, I think a, a barbell row has got to be in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. I like it for the fact, like you mentioned, in terms of addressing upper cross syndrome where your shoulders are coming forward. And there's just certain things that uh, in your training program, you want to make sure that it does combat everyday uh, patterns that, that could lead towards uh, repetitive injuries, uh, repetitive use injuries. So what you do the most could then, uh, you know, place your body in a position where it, 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 it doesn't benefit you anymore. You end up getting yeah. pain, you get shearing, uh, your, your joints aren't functioning the way they should anymore because it's out of its track. So, uh, it, it's definitely good for one of those to, to reinforce those stabilizing muscles to keep your shoulders where they need to be. I've just seen, I've also seen people who have such bad forward shoulder and they can do pull-ups, but the pull-ups actually make the forward shoulder shoulder worse right. yeah yeah, yeah you, and then they roll the shoulders forward yeah. yeah so barbell or dumbbell row has got to be up there the next movement um you could either pick a bench press or an incline barbell press it works the pressing muscles of the body it works the chest the triceps it works the the front part of the shoulders done properly either an incline or a barbell press is just a general good upper body exercise. It's one of the best uh, exercises. And again, if we're looking at developing a balanced body with just one strength building workout, I think a, some kind of a horizontal press uh, needs to be there. And uh, I don't know, do you guys, uh, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, no, I definitely think that. Uh, and I like the incline press mainly because the it, it places you in a good position. So uh, the more you learn about some of these compound lifts, like there, there's a lot of skill involved. And so there is a, a learning element to these things. If you're not familiar with these lifts, uh, the technique is going to play a big factor in this. And so the, the thing I like about the incline bench is it just helps you to already place your shoulder blades in a position where it's bracing yep. uh, and, and – that way you're not like over over putting too much demand on on your shoulders which then could lead towards uh problems so if you're building this with the intention that you're eventually going to get to overhead press then uh, i'm i'm fine and good with the the chest press but it really depends on your time frame right now right if you are doing two to three sets of the movements that we just said we might be getting close to the 25 minute mark mm -hmm. right now and so i'm either going to do an overhead press uh, mm. in replace of the incline press, or I'm going to do both if I can. If I can do both, I think that's a perfect world. That's ideal what I would do. I would yeah. do the like a flat or incline press. And you're right, Justin, the, the incline press is actually easier to teach. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's harder to have good form with a bench press, believe it or not, than it is with an incline press. So the fourth exercise would be an overhead press. Now, I personally, I can do two to three sets of all those exercises, do one to one and a half minute rest in between them, and that's four exercises, and I can do that in 30 minutes. I could totally do that in 30 minutes with that type of a rest. Overhead press uh, belongs in this routine, and you're, you make a good point, Adam. If you're running out of time, mm. then you could pick either a, a, an incline press or an overhead press. Yeah, either or. Yeah, standing overhead press is a phenomenal total body exercise. I mean, you're getting upper back activation to stabilize. You're pressing your core, staying active. Mm -hmm. You're getting triceps involved. So that's got to be up there as well. And there you go. There's your three to four strength building exercises, two to four sets each, one minute to two minute rest in between. 
and you're doing a six to six to twelve reps, and that is an excellent short muscle and strength building. And if uh, you workout. do that two to three times a week, you'll build a hell of a physique. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you're doing good. You, you'll get strong. You're, you're doing get, really you'll, good. You'll get real strong doing that. You are okay. So the next one would be a hit type workout. Now the goal with hit type training is burning a lot of calories in a short period of time and some conditioning. Hit training builds strength, stamina. It builds conditioning, muscle endurance. It, muscle endurance. Uh, hit training when you do it properly minimizes the potential muscle loss you can get from doing lots of stamina type training. If you were going to do thirty minutes of just straight cardio, you would burn a lot of calories also, but you also m- run the risk of having your body try to become more efficient by reducing muscle. This is why lots of cardio can start to cause metabolism slow down or cause muscle loss in a lot of people. Hit training done properly. Uh, you know, it negates that quite a bit. It can actually prevent the muscle loss, and you get really good short-term fat loss uh, type of an effect. Now, the way that I think you know that you should do hit training, kind of the same way we designed Maps Hit. You know, if, if you're the owner of Maps Hit, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We, I don't think hit training is done best on a piece of cardio. I think it's done best with weights. I think you're you're going to do great if you pick three to four exercises that you do one after another, not necessarily immediately one after another, but you're going from one, allowing yourself to reset, get steady, and then do the next one. And the goal is to have perfect form the entire time. When you switch exercises is when your form starts to break down, not when you can't breathe anymore and you're about to die. So you want to pick you know, maybe three or four balanced exercises. Now, some of the ones that I like is, uh, I'll, I'll put it generally out there, I'll say pick a leg exercise, a pushing and a pulling movement, and then maybe something rotational for the fourth one. So literally you could do something like a back step lunge to a push up, uh, to a body row, uh, maybe to a cable chop. And you've got your whole body kind of covered. And now the, this hit workout is actually gonna be less than 30 minutes. Uh, most of you will complete uh, three to four rounds in about 15 to 20 minutes. And again, though, really focus on perfect form. Mm -hmm. When your form breaks down, that's when you switch to the next exercise. Now, there's got to be a lot of people that are wondering, why not do the four exercises that we just listed for strength training in a HIT routine? You can. You absolutely can do those. Now, here's what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to imagine someone who's going to do both of these workouts. They have two 30-minute workouts. I'm offering them a little bit of variety. Also, the exercises are important that you pick for HIT, but they're they're important, so pick good ones. But when you're trying to train for muscle and strength, you want to pick muscle and strength building exercises. Well, yeah, and the case that or what I was alluding to there is that you know you have to be careful of if you were to choose to do uh, the first exercises that we talked about in a HIT sequence. Is those are all high skill movements. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so it's challenging to do you know if you're doing a, a a squat and you're doing it in a circuit where you know you've got weight on your back uh the 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 risk that you're you potentially uh could form be off while you're loaded in your back is a little higher or mm-hmm. much higher than doing a, a back step lunge mm-hmm. you know or walking lunges so uh, that's something to consider uh, if you are going to run you know, a hit type of routine as as beneficial as all those strength exercises we talk about. I I would be careful on how many of those compound lifts that I'm I'm pairing next to because then you start to get like the problems that we don't like about CrossFit. I mean, that's one of the things that we don't uh, care about the programming with CrossFit is that you know they throw all these compound lifts, super in, high skill, yeah, yeah, high skill lifts during high intensity and in, endurance training. And so uh, you know, I I wouldn't want a client doing more than one major compound lift in a in a series of a circuit like that. So Yeah, you definitely don't want to throw intention out the window. I mean, this is one of those things where it's a different uh, method, different modality, but it still has, it, you know, it, it's required. Uh, it's very technical. Like if you're going through this, especially if you're going through this with maximal effort or you're putting a lot of, uh, you know, extra effort into this where your body's going to start to get fatigued, your form's going to inevitably 
possibly break down you, and you can't think about just getting through the reps which is is a flaw is it, it happens all the time because the momentum of these type of workouts it promotes you to to really try to push yourself uh you know further through all these and just try to try to make it through the workout versus really paying attention to each individual exercise making sure the form and everything is correct right the difference would be like if you watch how a lot of people do a hit workout it looks like they're just trying to do as many as they can it's like oh a bunch of push-ups a bunch of burpees you know a bunch of pull-ups and it looks like they're just trying to get through and trying to get as many reps as possible that's not the effective way to do hit the most effective way to do hit looks like a strength training routine with low with with little to no rest what i mean by that is your push-ups are controlled slow yeah perfect your body rows controlled slow perfect squeeze extension your lunges slow control perfect once your form starts to deviate once you notice your hips are sagging on your push-ups or your body rows you're starting to jerk your body up or you're doing these these lunges and you're not going down as low or you're gotten real wobbly that's how you know it's time to switch the next exercise because remember what you train you strengthen and if you're training bad form and bad technique, that's what you're going to get good at. And that's what your body's going to move towards. So if you train your hit that way, you are asking for ineffective workout that is very, very injury prone. So per it's got to be perfect form. You aren't going immediately from ex one exercise to another. There is a short rest because what you're doing is just getting yourself set up mm -hmm. for good form again. But you are pushing your stamina more than what the traditional Yeah, your heart do. rate is still racing, but your composure is what you want to pay attention to. Gathering that composure again, going back into another exercise so you know that uh, you can uh, withstand all those, those factors against you in order to perform a good exercise. Totally. Now, the third workout... I'd like to make mobility focus because, you know, we're talking about strength and muscle. We're talking about calorie burn and conditioning. Mobility has to be up there, okay, because poor mobility reduces your ability to build muscle and strength just because you're not moving optimally. Your body eventually plateaus with strength and muscle because it, it's going to naturally try to limit you to prevent injury or you push yourself past that point, in which case you hurt yourself. It also increases range of motion that you have control over, which makes all things more effective. And it's also, if you do it right, improves the longevity of your body, meaning that you can continue to work out more and more. Mobility done properly improves your ability to adapt in different ways. It improves your ability to get endurance, improves your ability to build strength. It improves your ability to look better. And then of course, the obvious, it prevents uh, you know your risk of injury. Now the first mobility movement you know, we'll start from the top, you know, the upper body. I love the, you know, and there's two that I'll pick, either handcuffs with rotation or the wall test that we have as an assessment in MAPS Prime. I think that's phenomenal to work the upper shoulder, upper back area, the thoracic area, good control, stability, really giving you good controlled range of motion in the upper body. Remember, when you're working through mobility, it's not a stretch, so the idea isn't to get into a position, uh, just kind of let me sit here, let the, let the muscle stretch and loosen up. You have to be tensing in the position. You have to connect to your muscles in these positions. Otherwise, what you'll end up with is a greater range of motion that you don't have control over. So you'll be looser, but you're not stronger, which means you have an increased risk of injury. So what you want to do is have a greater range of motion that you connect to. And the only way to do that is to challenge your range of motion and then tense up all the surrounding muscles in that new range of motion, meaning you tense up the muscles that are stretching, you tense up the muscles that are contracting, all of the muscles around it, and that gives you that 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 improved mobility. Yeah. I like the windmill. <clears throat> Since we mentioned all these compound lifts and your body working in unison, um, it's, it's really important that uh, you have uh, proper support and stability <clears throat> and all these muscles to be involved. And so, to add in an element of rotation that's going, especially in your thoracic rotation, uh, something that's going to keep you uh, in, in your spine healthy, uh, to, to be able to do a windmill is is definitely one of those items, uh, mobility exercise I have to uh, incorporate with any type of uh, training like that. Well, when we did, and if you're listening and you haven't uh, signed up for the MAPS Prime Pro webinar uh, that I did, uh, you you have to. It's free. And if you're if you would like to see how to put a, a routine together that addresses uh, everything that we're talking about right now, that's exactly how I design that. And that's just one example, right? Like the program Maps Prime Pro has over 50 exercises, 
But like I, I narrowed it down to five moves that I think address all the things that you just said. I mean, you you started off Sal with the you know zone one, so we're looking at upper cross syndrome, uh, a, mo- a mobility type of exercise or drill there. <clears throat> Justin, you mentioned windmill for uh, you know thoracic uh, mobility and rotation, right? Uh, for me, that was the thread the needle. Like I love thread the needle for that. Um, it's a it's an easier mm-hmm. movement to to teach people to in, uh, gain more access and rotation. Um, but that when when that was created, that was the idea was to give somebody uh, movements that kind of address from all the way from head to toe all these different mobility uh, exercises. And you're right, so it's. Uh, that you, I could always tell the people that went through it the right way. I got tons of messages. Adam, is it normal that I'm sore? Hmm. You know, why am I sore? Well, yeah, you you woke up muscles that you hadn't done, and you probably haven't trained isometrics forever. If you've never trained isometrics, and then you do a, a good mobility routine, uh, you'll get sore. It'll build muscle. That's right. Yeah. So That's right. When you push your body into a different range of motion, at first you'll find it's hard to connect to that new range of motion. Like if you're stretching your hamstrings, put yourself in a really deep stretch. Mm-hmm. Now try to activate them. It's almost like you just don't have, it doesn't exist, it feels like. So you have to create intention. So ten, it's like tensing up your muscles and maintaining that tension throughout the movement. That's what makes it mobility. And that's what doesn't make it just a, a static stretch. Now the third movement, uh, 90-90. 90-90 works the hips. It works internal, external rotation, meaning your ability, your hips' abilities to turn your leg out, turn your leg in. It helps stabilize your hips. I love that movement. So that's got to be the third movement that I'll put um, on this mobility day. And then if I was going to add a fourth one, um, it would be combat stretch just to work on ankle mobility, which I think a lot of people uh, just have never known to even work on, myself included. This wasn't something I worked on ever because I didn't even know it was a thing until, believe it or not, until like five years ago. Well, you know? most people are wearing really uh, padded shoes and, and you're wearing these shoes that like lift up your heel quite a bit throughout the day. You don't even realize how much of a loss of connection you have with uh, your ankle supporting uh, your body. And so uh, taking the shoe element away, it really reveals uh, a lack of and a restriction there. So that's definitely one of those exercises that addresses that problem specifically. Right. Now, when you go through these movements for mobility, they look kind of like your strength training workout. So what I mean by that is you're doing reps. You're going into a position, you're tensing, you're holding, you're squeezing, you're holding, and then you lay off and take a break. And then you do it again. You're going through tensing, tightening, challenging ranges of motion, and then you take a break, rest a little bit, and then get back into it. The reason why you're doing that is because what you're trying to do is you're trying to, just like the strength training workout, you're trying to build strength, but you're trying to build strength in new ranges of motion by connecting to new ranges of motion. So what you're not doing is doing mobility movements where you're like going into the mobility, coming out. And I've seen people do this, right? They'll do like, you know, go in, go out, go in, go out. Or, you know, another one is they go in and, and then let it stretch and be like, oh, oh, that I can really feel that stretch. No, 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 no. You're going in with intention, tension, holding, squeezing five to 10 seconds in that, in that deep range of motion, connect, 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 and then come out Take a, take a few breaths, maybe rest 15, 20, 30 seconds, maybe even a minute, and then go into it again. This should and you're promote doing sets of a that. sweat. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a pretty intense exercise if, if you allow yourself to really get involved and, and squeeze and tense your muscles properly. Well, and the, the reason why this is so important is because everybody's body will have a, you know, a default end range of motion, right? So you go do like a lizard with rotation or like the internal ro- uh, rotation of the 90-90, and everybody will be able to move somewhat, right? How far depends on your your flexibility and mobility, but everybody will be able to move and mimic somewhat the movement. But you're not really doing anything if you just go to that end range and then come back out, go to the end range and come back out. We're trying to find a new range of motion. And so it, it requires that when you get to the end range, that connecting and trying to drive into it more and that's what's going to get you a, a greater range of motion, and that's where we're improving our mobility and connection. So uh, it's the number one thing that I see wrong with uh, people that are trying to emulate these exercises. They watch a YouTube video, uh, and then I see them you know, in the gym going through the movements. And if you just look at the movements and you try and mimic it and, and you're, you're not doing it with the right intent, it really does defeat uh, the purpose of the exercise. Totally. So there you have it. You've got three 30-minute or less 
workouts. They're well put together. We program them ourselves. The first one focuses on strength, building muscle, speeding up the metabolism. The second one focuses on conditioning, calorie burn, so it's a great fat burning type workout. The third one works on mobility, uh, stabilizing your body, giving you better ranges of motion, which helps with everything. And I am going to say this, if you just do one of them and you do that one all the time, it will start to lose its effect. So if you can only do one, that's okay, but try to cycle through them. If you can do all three in a week, you've got yourself a pretty balanced uh, workout and uh, routine. Look, we record these podcasts on video as well as audio. So if you're listening to us in your ears and you want to see what we look like, go to Mind Pump Podcast on YouTube. Come check it out. One thing we do on there too is we break up some of our episodes into the question and answer portion. So if you just want to learn a specific question or learn the answer to that question, go on there. We post the question and you can get uh, the answer. Again, that's Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.